In the real field, you say, I'm a terrorist, I'm a freedom fighter, I'm a terrorist, I'm a freedom fighter. Why do we need to tell anyone what we are? You know, like, let's say, I'm a freedom fighter and I do my thing, right? And I fight for freedom. Why do you think at some point in time we need to tell to someone else, which is like completely outside of my game, or field that I'm a freedom fighter and I'm not a terrorist. And why does it matter? Because in relation to this context, it was very important as well. Uh, but in the end of the day, and I'll, I'll, I'll give some sort of thought that I'm having, if you are not strong enough, organized, willing, and uh, ready to go to the end with your freedom fighting, uh, thing, uh, you always turn your head and you need to explain it, you know, because you're not really performing your freedom fighting. And this also happens here, and it's happening all over the place. And I think there's only very small, limited uh, uh, locations and issues where freedom fighters are actually just doing uh, and not thinking about the vision of the others uh, placed on them as freedom fighters or terrorists. And I just wanted to, to throw this, what you made me think, but not yes. no, that it is, is your, yeah. It is a really important question, and thanks for that. I think, uh, first of all, we can rule out that there's a third position from where you can objectify the two, right? There is no way you can say you're a little bit of a freedom fighter, you're a little bit of a terrorist, right? You cannot say that. That would be America. Uh, <laughs> this you cannot I say. say anything. I, don't, I don't need to say anything to anyone. No, no, no. Uh, this is why, because you cannot say that, these two or other people insist so much on what they, from their position they are. I, I totally am on your side. I think, who do you want to convince yourself, probably? So, this wouldn't be my this wouldn't be my issue. No, no, I'm convinced. Let's say I'm convinced. I'm a freedom fighter. Full stop. Yeah, but then you don't have to tell anyone, right? You want you, but you want you want somebody to join you. Yes, I already convinced. Let's say 100 other freedom fighters, and we are fine with it. We are fighting the war. We are trying to liberate the country. We don't need to convince anyone else. That's possible. Yeah. That's possible. But you were so much obsessed in the story, you know, obsessed in how the others are seeing us, you know. Oh, so mean, much. I mean, uh, you are obsessed probably because you don't. I'm saying we. I mean the. No, yeah, I mean uh, the, 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 the the partisans, for instance. They didn't need to uh, convince the uh, the Germans that they are partisans. Uh, the Germans understood that they are against them, they went after them. So there was no way that they went around, I'm really a partisan, believe me, seriously, I'm, I'm fighting against the Germans. You're already dead while you say that. So it's a different, it's a different picture. You just act and you better be silent about that. And of course I sympathize a lot with this uh, um, position. Of course the point is we are talking about a completely different uh, world historical situation where where the only mode of becoming a political subject seems to be to becoming a victim. The one who is supposed to speak is the victim in its very purity. And it's the transition of another subjectivization process where you are fighting what you perceive as injustice and through struggle and antagonism became a political subject. Today become through, you know, through becoming a victim. So you call for the big other, the police, so to speak, and try to convince them of being a good victim, or a bit more old-fashioned, they say, no, I'm not a victim, I'm actually fighting for something, and that's 
what you want to convince others of, because you don't want to be called a victim. These, I think, we all understand, but I agree in so far that they may be not very um, successful political strategies. It would rather be where my picture, or where I am in my own picture, where, where the, the picture that I have in my eye, where I'm there as well, where it doesn't work. That I connect with others through precisely this split. I probably will not connect with those who benefit from my stay. They probably are ones because they have another stay, and they, their stay is very big, they might kill me. But even though I cannot objectify my gaze, I may connect with others. Or, or put it this way I will organize myself with those who share my stupidity. I mean, stupidity here really as structural blindness, as structural. But this is not post truth. This is not like let's all believe in chemtrails and then unite or something. No, no. It is basically that non objectifiable uh, blind spot through which we may connect, so the split. And I'm very sympathetic to say why, who do you want to, who are you talking to? If, the, if, if you talk to the police, you had already been in interpolated by the police. My name is, and then you're already mapped according to an ethno sectarian pattern. Also, your kind of oppression Olympics is already mapped where you are the ranking, and then you, you subject you can speak, and you're calling in the police, the UN or America, who is behind it, of course. That wasn't meant by it. So I'm. It's, I think I agree totally, but I, I, I return the question to you through how do you mobilize then your blind spot vis-a-vis -vis others and how we can unite, not unite, but find nodal points of chains of solidarity so precisely our blindedness. And that's still something to be told. And I think this is another political procedure probably than the heroic Freedom, but I only use this for, you know, graphic uh, example. Uh, just to say something in the end, because we have been related for all you have time. This context is very interesting also for this for this uh, discussion, because Kosovo today is uh, wrongly used as a, as a unique case of how countries declare independence. And actually, it should be considered as a unique case how people fight for freedom. Uh, because we were using the victim strategy for 10 years, okay? And then some crazy people started... Stupidity. He has to practice stupidity, okay? And really didn't uh, care about what, what else was happening around. This strategy of always looking for the... Uh, for the West, for the police to come and, and say it was So it is a unique case to also to explore, and this is what I'm, uh, I want to say. Yeah, it's, it's, this is the right place where you can actually explore and research how in, in practical terms this was done. I'm going to say it's a wrong, it's a wrong example, but I had to... A very wrong example to go after the political idea of how you declare independence, but it's the perfect example of how you it was successful. successful. It was successful. It was but successful, it was a fight for uh, liberation, yeah. not the de really declaration of independence. It was successful in the wrong. But you were successful in the wrong, which is also something. I can also if you look at other countries. Uh, you would say, if you look at at Kurdistan, or at least the, the socialist democratic forces in Kurdistan, they reject to be a victim. They lost their case. These struggles at the beginning, but this is this is the way as, as a true, truly the past, past of some different system in, in which, uh, as as it is uh, in, uh, in the press, art was not free in communism and communist totalitarianism. The story is much more complicated. And uh, I would like to start with one anecdote. Uh, like, uh, when th there was uh, 20 years of the fall of communism in Salzburg. I was invited, and it was a 
conference, and a very uh, young at that time, young uh, woman from originally from Bosnia, she uh, got her PhD at Harvard in uh, uh, cultural studies and film studies, and she was talking about black wave films, uh, about this film, and about Jacques Gilding uh, early works film. <clears throat> You know, presenting this international audience what, what she knows, being both uh, native informant coming from, from Bosnia and having this qualification of Harvard. You know, the audience believe everything she said. And, and she gave this, this story about, about how the, the, the films were, were prosecuted, not shown, and she mentioned uh, Jeanne Gilles early works film that uh, 68 uh, wins uh, the Golden Bear in, in Berlin. And everybody, you know how it is, uh, everything is clear. And then I asked one question. I asked her whether she knows who financed the film. And all, you know, the audience was looking, what a weird question. You know, we know. Uh, uh, she looked at me, the state, of course. And they said, no, 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 it was bank loan. And when I asked whether she knows these people who made the film, actors, cutters, director, etc., were they employed or not? Strange question. 95% of this film you will see, 95% of those people who made these films were freelancers. Vicarious freelancer working from contract to contract. And you will see at the very beginning of the film, in the first three minutes, it is not only about cultural workers, it was also the, the, the situation of the, of the workers, migrant workers, outside of the labor market, not protected by anyone. This is the story. I, 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 I would like to. Uh, of course, uh, the black wave is presented as a classical case of uh, art critical about uh, uh, the reality, about communist, communist political, uh, social situation, etc., and oppression of the state. The films uh, were, some of them were forbidden. Forbidden, we, we uh, uh, called it at that time, not for, uh, forbidden, but put into the Bunker, bunker, bu bunker, the bunker, to put into the bunker, which means you could see that. Uh, but anyway, this is another story. Uh, but what is important, um, black, the, uh, the black way was coined by a critic in the uh, Yugoslav official paper, Borba, the struggle. It was the official voice of the Communist Party of Yugoslavia. And what is interesting in this uh, in the, 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 the article essay, it's not a, it, it's an essay on six pages, six big pages in the newspaper. This is the accusation of, 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 of black wave, of the authors, etc. etc. And usually people today they don't read these articles. They think they know everything. They know this is yes, these are uh, communist apparatchiks, and this is the official party politics, and they tell that art cannot be free, that art should, should provide some social work, etc., etc., how it looks. Of course, I, I, I took this essay I, <laughs> many, many years ago, I analyzed it, and I found it, it's so interesting. And I will just give you a few quotations, but before, before I um, give these few quotations and explain what is in the article, just to, to tell you. For, for Yugoslavia, the, the, the end of the so-called state system and controlled economy begins already after 52. 48 is a split with Stalin, Soviet Union. Uh, 52 for Yugoslavia is outside of the uh, uh, Eastern Bloc, Warsaw Pact, is a military pact with Turkey and Greece against communism. Um, so many artists, uh, officers of Yugoslav army, pilots, they are training in the United States, uh, 
you know, West Point Academy, uh, etc., and uh, also in, in uh, uh, getting Fulbright uh, scholarships. They are already through the 50s in, 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 in the States, mostly in the West, let's say, in the West. <coughs> uh, in the 50s, Yugoslavia becomes a member of the World Bank and the National Monetary Fund. Uh, the factories uh, 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 function on the market, Yugoslav market and international market, which means it is not a command economy. It is not the state telling them what they should produce, how much, how much it will cost, and how much the wages shall be paid. It is free to each to each factor. And there are huge differences between the north in Yugoslavia and between the south. This is especially interesting for the for this part, for Kosovo, not only Kosovo, but Macedonia. This was the south. After the introduction of the market economy during the 50s, the gap between south and the north was deepening, widening, widening, and, and widening. So, uh, 45, it was 2 to 3, the difference between Slovenia and Kosovo. At the moment when Yugoslavia uh, falls apart in uh, uh, 1991 and it is 8 times difference between North and South. Yugoslavia, history of Yugoslavia, is a huge drama, which is very interesting for us today, huge drama about the inability of the system to cope with the north-south relation, difference, divide. So, this was just a short introduction. Uh, already during the 50s, the beginning of the, of the 60s, 63 is the economic reform. In the economic reform, what the problem is, and I, I'm giving you just a quote from the Vladimir Bakrić, who was chief of the of the Croatian General Secretary of Croatian Communist Party, seven one, and I remember this from this minute. People don't don't read, you know, the, the what uh, what the uh, Central Committee really discussed and what, what they what they te uh, 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 told. He he said at that moment that we communists in Yugoslavia are in total minority. Uh, the power is in the hands of the financial capital, uh, of banks, trade companies, and uh, uh, insurance insurance companies, and they have only one project before their eyes. They have only one project, and this is this is the quote, seventh one from the Central Committee. Their project is privatization, 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 and only privatization. It's seventh one already. You will see this. In film. So these changes, this transformation, the introduction of market and economy, the opening of the borders, Yugoslavs, you know, at that time, 60s, they can travel all around the world. Yugoslav passport is much better than German one. Uh, but why? It is not, you know, like uh, um, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, you know, a better face of, of, of Yugoslav socialism, etc. This was the necessity. The moment they introduced market economy, the unemployment rise. Huge unemployment. And they had to open the borders to leave the surplus of the labor force outside, mostly to Germany and, and, and to the West, so, you know, to, so that the, the, the country uh, uh, doesn't explode socially. So, so it was the necessity, the freedom was the necessity, I hope to, to say. So, in uh, uh, 1665, the Alexander Rankovic, who was chief of the secret police, was removed. And the chief, uh, especially people in Kosovo, know, <laughs> know very well his, his name, uh, yeah, he had developed after the war huge uh, mechanism of, of control, of control of ev everywhere, and he was removed. And this is the moment, I'm not saying that, that people were not, uh, 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 during the 50s, free to, to, to make uh, films, and that uh, uh, actually culture was quite old in former Yugoslavia. But this is the moment of, of, uh, of sort of liberation 
in, 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 in former Yugoslavia. You know, like it's also about religion. You would you would think a religion, whether it was forbidden or not, Yugoslavia was a, um, a secular state. Secular, but uh, 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 different religious communities, uh, churches, they could, for instance, publish. They had uh, uh, publishing houses. They were present in the in the in the. In the in, in the public, so it was sort of uh, we call it liberal, a liberal version of, of communism. And at that moment, six, the, uh, 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 a series of films were produced uh, presenting this dark side of Yugoslav society, of unemployed workers, of criminal, of etc. 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 And '69. One guy in Borba publishes this essay accusing black wave filmmakers of betrayal, or I'm just just to give you an idea uh, what are his accusations. He he says that they betray the true picture of, of Yugoslavia, not the truth of the reality, but the picture. This is very important. This is what is what is the problem. Um, uh, so, uh, the authentic picture of Christian society of that time is not in the, I quote, yellow yearbooks of the contemporary daily press. For this informative level, stored in the archives, and he, he writes at that time, computer brains will fade into oblivion, but instead in the, so the true picture from his perspective of the society will be be preserved in the art made at, at the time. The future, as he states, will not believe uh, the future, as he says, will not believe though, the condensed and suggestive artistic story and picture that this reality produced. In his view, this is why the future will have a black picture of Yugoslav society of the 60s and 70s. So, he actually looks at the reality and the film production from the perspective of, of the future art. Art that has preserved the truth of the history. So the struggle about the truth is not between you know, artistic production and the reality. It is all about how art presents and it is not about the, that time present. It is, the, you know, future, future perspective. So, he accuses the, the authors of the Black Way of betrayal. But betrayal of what? Not primarily of reality. They are not so much blamed for having unfaithfully represented reality in their films, for painting it more black than it really is, but rather the real crime consists in misrepresenting the society they belong to. The, uh, so, when the critic uses the notion of a true picture of society, it is not so much the truth that is at stake in, the, in, this, in the society, the realistic representation of social life, but the picture of the society. And he, right, he, he complains that society in, in the black wave films dresses in dress before take, taking picture, picture of itself. So, but... Um, this is, you know, we always think that uh, there was a clash between communist ideology and uh, true artistic, you know, a need for freedom, free expression, etc., etc. And you would, you would expect of, of, of such, you know, party critic that he quotes Marx, Lenin, or I don't know, some of those like ideologues. In support of his criticism, he naturally calls on authorities. However, these are not Marx, Engels, or Lenin, or Yuzman Marxists, leading party intellectuals. It is Bosley Crowther, instead, legendary film critic for the New York Times, and at that time art director of Columbia Pictures, who is quoted uh, uh, from an interview he gave at that time to, Yugoslav, uh, to a Yugoslav magazine. And I quote American critic, famous New York. Times critic, he says, you Yugoslavs, you are so vital. You know how to look at women. Yes. Look. You can laugh from the heart. You are open. There is an original joy of life in you. 
Why then are your films so bitter, so dark? <laughs> what is the truth? You as I have seen you, or you as you present yourself in the films? Or is this all in your film a temporary fashion of pessimism, which with a certain delay comes to your authors from abroad? Thus, we have the official position of the party in cultural issues at this, this by, uh, my argument. Uh, we had the official position of the party on intellectual or cultural issues at that time, drawing its arguments from an identification with the Western Orientalist sexist gaze that imagined Yugoslavia as an exotic realm of authentic enjoyment of life and natural vitality. So this is this is the party uses American critic and uses orientalist arguments against its, its authors. It's not about you know, communist, communist ideology. So this is what is, what is the blackness. <clears throat> so they are, they are blamed for clownishly presenting the nation and the society for the sake of a cheap and ephemeral mundane thing. It is all about how you present yourselves abroad and for the cultural, artistic posterity. All about it. So this is this is just an introduction. I'm just saying, <laughs> saying it in advance. Look, try to look uh, what you see in, in the film from a different perspective. Forget the post-communist discourse on you know uh, dogmatic party apparatchiks and uh, poor uh, uh, artistic freedom-loving authors and filmmakers, etc. The, 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 the story is much more complicated. So I suggest that we now see the film. Would, would you let like to say something? We watch it first and then I will moderate and we will ask you a couple of questions based on what you said. Then we will open it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It goes back to your introductory remarks. So, what we see is exactly um, the opposite of also how you put it, uh, party apparatchiks into communist or what what they think communist last struggle, of course, was not any more uh, uh, the state politics at the time versus young, freedom-loving, uh, young students that want to somehow get in touch with uh, musical and cultural developments in the UK, in the West. We probably all of you recognize the, the beat song that was played uh, by those Belgrade uh, uh, musicians, the, this beat band. Uh, rather, we have a quite opposite picture of the uh, dispersed, uh, precarious life of you know, class struggle without having the solidarity of other vagabonds slash uh, uh, yeah, precarious laborers. Uh, so, our anti hero in the end dies, of course, but the, uh, it's, it's, the, it's completely the opposite picture of uh, the cliché that you uh, um, uh, drew us for us in your introductory remarks. Maybe you want to comment on that. Uh, yes, <laughs> just like uh, uh, time and again, uh, when you see this song context, then uh, it's 67, this is the documentary material. And I told already you have this, you know, uh, market, uh, economy, industrial growth at that time. It is, it is very, very successful uh, Yugoslavia at that time. Economy grows, etc., etc. Et but this is this is the the background, social background of the economic growth. And and you see this turn, this guy at the beginning who complains. You know, at, at first scenes, when Jimmy comes uh, there, then there's this guy who says, look me, I, I, I finished, I do 
faculties that I'm uh, pouring water for the for the chief to, to wash his uh, his face. I'm going to leave. I leave. I don't. I, I'm not going to stay here. He leaves, and at the end, in Belgrade, he says. I am the biggest manager in, uh, in the Balkans. So you see this already post-industrial turn. He changed to the cultural industries. He is manager. And of course, it's a pop beat now. And then with this province, uh, the, the, the whole, this, this road movie, so to say, uh, goes through the uh, province. And when it comes to the Belgrade, this is the catastrophe, the, the, the truth. And then, and then we have the closing is uh, this song context. You know, we can we can look at uh, from the perspective of you know the story of Susan Boyle, <laughs> this uh, neoliberal uh, contests everywhere for talents. You know that, uh, as you know, uh, the pattern was British. Um, how was it called this this contest? Um, yeah, X Factor, British, and, and then it was subsequently, subsequently translated into all post-communist countries. You know, you would have Bulgarian idol, I don't know, everywhere, but you had it already 67, but with the truth. You, so, you see it from those who lose, not from Susan Boyle perspective. And uh, this is already, we, we can... Uh, uh, look at this film as a critique of the neoliberal capitalism and the promises of cultural industry to replace, you know, all the industries. It, it's much, 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 works much better in, from this perspective than from the perspective of a critic of, of uh, communist totalitarianism, etc. This is one point. Of course, it is the critic of the, of the reality, but, but you see, it's quite free. I mean, how they talk about. Uh, you see uh, uh, workers' strikes, uh, you see uh, uh, things that, that didn't work, work at that time, uh, and you see this dark reality of, uh, I'm repeating it, this is the moment of growth. This, uh, these days in Zagreb there is an exhibition in the 60s in, in Yugoslavia, the 60s, as the best years of, of our life, with the cultural, architectural production, with, uh, with openness, etc., etc. But this film <laughs> tells another story. So you would say that this particular case, especially in Yugoslavia, is another facet in the counter image of 68. I mean, we also had in recent years a couple of mostly leftist accounts on what is the like dark side of 68 as, of course, not seen from a cynical view of, a point of view, but as one step in a yeah, teleology of capital, the world market. So a transformation where a new faction of the bourgeoisie uh, engineered the change that was later known as, you know, said, new university economy, but let's put it this way, culture, creative industries and what we normally would call the end of industrial capitalism and post fordism that normally we'd say that took place in the 70s or late 70s when the new liberal, new conservative governments took over. So you say, in a way, in this other you would definitely read, I mean, not in a monolithic uh, uh, image, but that you, you can read 68 as this kind of transformation within uh, a capitalist economy. Uh, what makes it uh, specific is that uh, you have market economy, but you have this promise of the socialist state to take care of you. This is, you, you know, it, it is expected, and this is the, uh, th there is this tension. We don't see it, but uh, this is what frames actually the film. The tension between the promise of socialism and the reality. Uh, in, in a, let, let's call it, normal Western, Western uh, developed uh, 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 capitalism at that time, which included the welfare state also, uh, there was not that tension between the promise and, and the reality. Uh, 
So this is probably what, what created this sort of creativity and this perspective, this critical perspective. And Zilnik's uh, 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 early works is precisely and explicitly the dark side of the 68 uh, as you know, the ideals of the, of the, of the 68 uh, students movement. The failure, failure that is already 68 uh, presented in the I see something like this. I see, I see a peasant culture becoming industrialist and there's a lot of chicken. There's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of animals. It's dirty. There, it's muddy, you know? So, I mean, when you say civilization and progress and 68, I see a mess. It's, it's there's also a peasant element, so, and also yeah, there's this weird scene where there's also some kind of surrealism, you know, where one thing meets the other in a very absurd way. At some point there is a conflict, and then there's a guy cleaning uh, a medical model. No? Yes. It's a, it's a total absurd juxtaposition there, and also the scene where, where our protagonist gets killed is like, boom, you know, it's uh, such a mega conflict. I'm not doing an analysis, intelligent analysis here, but I would like to, maybe you to elaborate about partly the, the, the development of the cloud at the point, and maybe the, the juxtapositions also. There's this totally absurd scene where, where we have here, the well understood American movie movie, or what is it, no? Uh, in the middle of a socialist country, that's such an absurd, also, juxtaposition. I mean, it's just from the reflection. Uh, well, uh, you see ambiguities, contradictions. Uh, you see this, this tension between, between the pre-industrial, industrial, cultural industries, uh, but you have all mixed uh, at one historical and social moment, and uh, uh, this is this is great about this film uh, that was able to catch to catch this these contradictions and then to to, to present it in, in, in that way. Um, uh, as, yes, mud, dirt, <laughs> the, you know. It's a, and neorealism also behind this is this this artistic background of course uh, 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 Zika Pavlovic uh, quotes it this they love neo neorealism Italian of course um, uh, but we are now at the moment where I cannot offer more <laughs> interpretation than the new guys it's, uh, everybody in, in in such, in, in this story, I mean, uh, the way how it is presented, uh, the film itself, um, all this possibility for, for projection of many different perspectives. I'm very interested in how, how young people look at this presentation of the, of the past. It is also uh, the past of Yugoslavia and, and uh, the this dramatic de development at that time was also here with industrialization and, and this pre-industrial um, context uh, with tradition and then, you know, the, the, these people actually, they, they all move they are in, constantly moving they lost their ground they are no longer peasants they, the, this countryside is sort of stage, but people on this stage are already in a, you know, a, I would say civilized movement. Because the civilization is not the opposite of, the, of what is dark, what is mud, what is dirt, what is uh, uh, belated. 
uh, 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 this backward. Civilization is Western concept to other, other, so as the Western subject could, could uh, uh, present itself as a civilizer, <laughs> as a civilizing agency. But uh, as I'm saying, you know, when, if you would come to Zagreb and see the see the um, exhibition now, or you would come to New York, to MoMA, and see the exhibition Concrete Utopia, which is these days, uh, as we know, a few weeks ago, opened in New York. Now, the uh, uh, you know, New York Times celebrates the heights of Yugoslav architecture, culture, etc., etc. But this film shows also another Another picture. So uh, I, I think this the, the story in, in New York uh, has to be complemented, not to not to put in question the the, 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 the beauty and the, 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 the greatness of this art and architecture, but to 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 get the, the you know the, the real picture of the of the contradictions and where the art. And the beauty, so called, so called beauty, where uh, in, in which context it, it articulates itself. You speak about uh, merrealism, and I think uh, that, that was one of my my questions because I I I see clearly that this is a source that they saw and they thought about. But it seems to me that there's a, a very important difference. One of the differences is that there is not a voice. The voice is not uh, is not in another moment. As, like in oralism, every time the voice is not being taped on the shooting. So this is one very important point of this distance uh, mm -hmm. created by the oralism. Here is any distance, I think. And uh, you, you say, the contradiction. I, I had the impression that in the construction of the film there are very interesting contradictions in this approach. Because uh, when I think about uh, mo most uh, evolution of neuralism, like uh, Pasolini did, let's say, that there's something more like this that I, I feel here, but in a very open way, so that we have never uh, an objective point of view, even in Catholic. When he came out of the boat, and uh, the, the camera is never placed in, in a narrative way, it's always uh, an, another point of view that we couldn't understand. So in the in the cutting and in the way it's shooted, I have the impression that there's a real interest in constructing non-linear uh, point of views. I don't know if this is something that was we want an the surrealistic approach. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I mean, there's something for the art about the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Or, 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 or simply the tradition of the uh, you know, of surrealism. Yeah, sure. It, it, it has its own from the, from the 20s. So, um, and then the Gustav uh, Avant-Garde. So, it has its own tradition of surrealism. Which is local? Sorry? Which is local? Yes, it is local. Which is Hugo. <laughs> Which is Hugo's. You know the uh, Kocha Popovich, the, the, the Tito's general and the general commander of the first proletarian division, uh, was a Sorbonne-educated uh, surrealist and poet and officer of Spanish Spanish army. They, you know, they switched <laughs> from from surrealism, Paris surrealism, to Spain and then to the uh, Bosnian mountains. And, uh, and then he is at that time he is the minister of foreign affairs. He's surrealist. So there are many, many, many stories, but but uh, uh, surrealism is a part of of, of, of um, local legacy. If I if I may comment this, I have to say you are privileged to having had a dictator. Who was interested in art? <laughs> what country has that? Uh, yes, that uh, I, I wrote a book to 
together the challenge of Shilling. And uh, he knew all these guys and, uh, and the industry, how industry in the 60s already works. They, they are closely connected to, to the states. Some of them, uh, this, this is uh, central film, Belgrade. So it's not, you have um, film companies, there are other film in Belgrade, different, Sutiska film, Yaga film in Zagreb. And they all uh, work in co production with Western uh, filmmakers. So, uh, you, at that time, you come to the director in Avala film, and he would like uh, talk to the greatest directors and actors in the world at that time. It, it, it is at that time closely connected to, to what happens in, in the world, in the film. Uh, uh, and uh, yes, this sort of, uh, you know, we call it, I would, would never call it dictatorship, but uh, authoritarian system, of course. This was definitely an authoritarian system, uh, but actually the space, not only architecture is extremely interesting, and uh, economically there was a power behind. And <laughs> these films uh, were, you know that they uh, they earned money in former Yugoslavia. I was I was now in prison in the cinema theater in prison, and you, you know uh, this is they cinema theater in prison uh, in one year former Yugoslavia at, at the peak of, of of this culture when these films are shown has had three hundred thousand visitors. Cinema theater in prison because they checked it. They, then, then there are uh, document material. So it is mass <laughs> culture. And uh, but you see already this is uh, this is also the time when the media changed. The yellow press, yellow press that later uh, uh, late eighties turned nationalistic and prepared the war. But this is the yellow. You, you see this guy when when yellow press. yellow press. What is yellow press? Boulevard. Boulevard press. This is how you you saw Rusica Sokic. This singer comes to the guy who's journalist and she tells, "Okay, I mean the stories. I will fuck with you and you will tell the fake fake news. <laughs> you will create fake news about about this is how we already your corruption already in Boulevard." Uh, 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 press, you have it, but the same corruption uh, end of the 80s started to create national hatred, and, and especially this Belgrade, Belgrade, we call it Yellow Boulevard Press, which was huge, powerful, and they started to create, you know, story about nation being victims, etc., etc., and prepare Milosevic and everything what 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 later. So you see it already in film how corrupt it was at that time. <coughs> it, and it's not about state controlling, controlling media and journalists. It, they were, they, they have, you know. And then another guy comes, he earned some money, European and Asia tour. You know, he comes from abroad already. So it's 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 quite weird, but it is very very interesting to to analyze it and. To see, you know, the structure of the future uh, collapse and tragedy. So that um, yes, I, I, I just uh, yes. Other there, then I will respond. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, more questions. I I, have. Just, well, I want to ask them as well. But then we have one in the audience. Someone so. Uh, More questions from the audience. The yeah. audience definitely, in the meantime, I will ask you another question regarding the future, the image of the future. Obviously, the fight was not between one faction and the other faction, or uh, working class uh, versus party, or uh, a new bourgeoisie uh, against the old party apparatchik, and so on, but about a certain picture uh, of Yugoslavia uh, or seen from for the coming future. So, this. Oh, Strange displacement of uh, what we learned in another Pranimia mentioned this when you can see the things are talking about um, the end of class struggle in the 
constitutional phase of Yugoslavia and settling the case, so to speak, of class struggles of the party and the state. And then the uh, so-called liberalization and self-management and socialism, that Yugoslavia, as strange as it seems, was actually too early, too, too avant-garde for a certain movement which we can call the culturalization of the, the political economy. Normally we, uh, we refer here to Frederick Jameson and the cultural term in postmodernism that's basically in the early 80s uh, when he talked about it. So, if I follow your argument correctly, then you have this already there where you have a class struggle basically displaced to the cultural realm. We are now fighting art and cultural production about a certain representation of Yugoslavia. And then we have the struggle in a displaced realm. Yet, if I finish your argument one or push it a little bit further, then it would be so far so good, but also so bad, because Yugoslavia was just too early. Too early, because this kind of paradigm shift came later and uh, was already too far advanced on, in terms of engineering this kind of displacement, which today is a very common term of the culturalization of uh, political economic uh, structures of power. Uh, well, in, in, in this article, that, uh, well, in this huge essay, by the party apparatchik who accuses Black Way of, of, uh, of uh, 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 betraying the true picture of Yugoslavia. It is all about how art, as I said already, it is the art that will preserve the true picture of society. And the whole struggle is the struggle for the, for the presentation in the, in the culture. This is what it is uh, already about. And this is what I see as culturalization of politi politics already at that time. They, you know, you know he, he doesn't uh, argue in, in any sense of, in terms of some social, social cause or, or... No, this is not the point. The only point is who... Uh, 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 how the, the, the future, future in cultural terms, in terms of, we would say today, cultural memory. <laughs> it's already the struggle uh, uh, about cultural memory. Who will present, who will present the, the truth in the future? This is, this is something uh, interesting. And uh, as you know, the, this article actually, the identification is not with some ideas, communist ideas or Marxist ideology, or uh, historical materialism. This, this is not the argumentation. Uh, the, the, the writer, the author, the author, the, so the party position, is a sort of identification with the external gates, uh, external in both terms. It's, it's American, it's Western at that time, but at the same time, it's a future perspective. This is, this is this, the gaze of the other, of the future and of, we would say today, of the West. And this is interesting, this is, you have this cut, I would, I would now use this Lacanian, Lacanian uh, formula of the differentiation between imaginary and symbolic identification. You have the level of imaginary uh, uh, identification, this is, you know, identification with ideal uh, ego. It, it is when you are identified with the picture of uh, yourself as you would like to be. You know. So you, you look at this is the imaginary level. But there is the symbolic level. This is when you identify with the case of the other. And just to, to explain you uh, very concretely, you know this famous case of, uh, of Becca from Pappenheim, Anna, Anna Hall, I mentioned probably. Uh, in the early stage of uh, psychoanalysis, she, um, she behaves like her mother in her symptoms, she dressed like her mother, etc. And then the first level of identification is, yes, her mother is her ideal ego, which is she wants to be like her mother. In, in this case, this is a socialist country that 
that can identify itself with your, you know, uh, successful uh, 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 solving the class struggle, etc., etc. But then uh, Breuer, concretely psychoanalysis, said, okay, but for whose gaze she dresses herself as mother? For the gaze of the father. Symbolically, she identifies with the gaze of, of the father and offers herself as a sexual object to, to her father. This is the true story. This is the symbolic level of identification. And here in this Yugoslavia a moment, you know, it is not the problem of identification with the communist ideals and how socialist society should, should uh, 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 look like and what is the difference between the reality and the ideals of communism? No, this is Western gaze. <laughs> Western uh, and the future of gaze looking at a society that struggles constantly. Uh, so this, I, I see this is, this is precisely in this, in this essay. <laughs> you know, he calls actually American, 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 uh, New York Times, <laughs> calling New York Times argument against against uh, artists, Jugoslav uh, makers. And coming back to black black wave, uh, black. What is? I wrote. Uh, I read in your essay that uh, um, a different version that I read of this essay. Uh, you gave a couple of excerpts uh, as introductory remarks. Uh, how you frame the, the black? Black is basically the the uh, let's say the uh, uh, impossibility or not the impossibility or maybe the defeat of exposing this dynamic which was visible already and basically having this defeat not on the realm where. He dies basically um, uh, uh, as in terms of earning his money. In a way, yes and no, but maybe not uh, the protagonist here, but as, as, as this form of art basically dies and is defeated by the same movement that they predicted and depicted or tried to, to present in the cinema. So there's a kind of a double blackness, not only of the protagonists, not only of, 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 of the directors and those who participated in, in, in this cinematic movement or cultural movement, but also the defeat that makes it black. It's not anticipated, of course, but uh, a unique example that you can elaborate on that, that you could not, from the position of art where you're uh, art and culture, where your struggle had been displaced, you cannot re re return and engineer social struggle from there. Politically engaged art and so on, I mean, that's the fetish of our time. Uh, but basically, this defeat was already lived in this movement. This is uh, a Jeanne Gilles short uh, documentary called Black Movie. It's precisely this. You know, the, the defeat, the, the moment, it is the film about the impossible, impossibility of activist intervention in, in, in the society. From art. To From art, yeah. That art tries and to change something and fails. This is this famous uh, cold, cold black movie, so we think. <clears throat> You're talking about this impossibility. I, I understand very well. I agree. And it seems very interesting to me that there is something going on with the bodies uh, in the film. Because even if he changes his name, his body, his body doesn't uh, work like the bodies we see in, on the scene. And even before the scene in the city. So there is something that the bodies are moved differently from different desires and they move for some ends. If I stay here, I can examine. So I, 
uh, the first singer is, is uh, singing like Patti Bravo, who was a famous Italian singer, and she is as high as Patti Bravo, and she wears clothes as Patti Bravo. And, and there is something in the bodies that uh, the body are not moving with their own touch, I would say. It's another gaze looking at them, and they move for this other gaze. So, so in the, your example, they are moving for the thumb. In and Jimmy cannot. And I think there is something very important in this, uh, in this uh, artistic way of, of making a new kind of politics through the field of biopolitics, let's say, is a bigger word. But it seems that Jimmy cannot, and that's why he dies. We could say in this. Yes, it's, it's a good. Uh, you, you provoke me to, to, to uh, answer. Uh, uh, in mind what I said yesterday, what I was talking about yesterday, in uh, several times in, in the movie, Jimmy tries to answer in the English language. He says no, or I'm Jimmy, you know, this, uh, of course he cannot speak English, but he's surrounded you know, by those who speak already, you know, this young uh, 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 rock stars, they already <laughs> speak English, they are already there. They are already there. He is split. What would you say? His vernacular body cannot follow the idea. And he is still, and this is probably uh, uh, how this vernacular ver world of dirt, of mud, of the impossibility, you know, to fly, to become the West, you know, to speak perfectly English and to be recognized recognized in your, your uh, um, becoming this, this other, you know, within your, this uh, 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 lingua franca of English, world and culture, etc. This is this paper, I find it extremely interesting, you know. This is probably the case that, uh, I think this split is, until nowadays, how these societies today are split between these elites, that, that uh, are mostly, you know, that it's educated in, in English language, etc., and study abroad, and, and on the other side, you know, the growing, growing masses of those who are left behind, who cannot catch up, whose bodies, whose dirt, whose mud, whose <laughs> vernacular, vernacular uh, impossibilities. To stay in your example, the body of Jimmy has no father to act for. This is very political. Yeah, in the field, it has no father. Yeah. If, if we see it in, in Yugoslavia at this time, the father is not the case, it's no more. No. no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or these young people staging uh, beat and whatever, they are acting for some. And this, I think, is very political. I see it very political. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's interesting. Looking for a new master that was as political. <laughs> yes, the exposition yes. of the hysteria in court for the new master. Yes, the old one doesn't. It's the worst anyway. I, I won't defend this argument. Yeah. Yeah. No? Yes. Basically, economic growth. We don't need people anymore. Uh, 
I mean, having a nation that that rejects the picture of the culture it produces is kind of a. I know that this this happened in Russia, or the Nazis worshipped culture, for example, in, to the extent that they had to change it. They had big difficulties in finding. It took some time, for example, to decide which one culture they wanted, and then it was extremely complicated, you know, whatever they wanted. Isn't it flattering to have a government which has such a respect for culture? I don't know, uh, the, the notion of culture at the time when the theme was made, the notion of culture we need today uh, uh, use are extremely different, but then you see some sort of continuity of, of, of cultural um, articulation and, and value and artistic also, artistic value. But uh, as I have been arguing, uh, you know, the, the whole struggle the whole struggle, actually, in the film itself, uh, takes place on a cultural scene. It is uh, uh, the whole. It is. It's about who succeeded or not in cultural terms. And he loses. The final loses. He loses on the stage. Uh, this is one thing, and the same is in this in this article. It is all, it is a cultural struggle. It's about, it's a, a political struggle, which, which means the party and the state attacks culture, but not in terms of uh, 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 culture, uh, uh, culture being a, a good or bad presentation of the reality, but being the sole uh, field of struggle. And it is about this cultural position. Who will who will be in charge in the culture? Okay. They worry, don't they? They will, of course they do. They are, if, if, I, I think this, this article is an expression of total panic, which means that they, they uh, feel already they, that they can lose the future and actually the feeling. I mean, I, I live in a country which, where the politicians don't care. Yes, this is a difference. Uh, today yes, is a full of difference. Uh, uh, yes, but today, uh, I, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Central Europe, Croatia, Hungary, even Austria, Slovakia. But take Croatia, culture has become the uh, battlefield of the right fascist uh, neo conservative movement. And they understand culture similarly to the to the author this this of, of the party magazine as sort of a, a museum of identity you know, presentation. Who will be in charge of the cultural representation of the nation? Who will be in charge of of the identity in its I call it identity museum? Who will be the curator of the identity museum? This is what is a political, uh, the major political state today uh, in, like in, in Croatia, in, uh, uh, in the political struggle in neo, I wouldn't call it neo, because it's fascist, we call it Ustasha. <laughs> you know, they, they uh, um, a year ago had a minister, a minister of culture. So this is, <clears throat> but it's already announced here in, in, in this conference. Not only to be a little bit provocative, maybe it's late, but also linking culture is making a very similar, uh, bringing, uh, showing very similar interest in culture. When uh, you go to Manifesto in Palermo and all linking culture seems to be politically engaged, this is a very similar to what right wings are making in Austria or wherever. It's not very really different. Culture has become a place of struggle. It can, can be used links, uh, linkly or rightly in, in, the, in the idea that culture has to do this. Even in England. 
But it's a little bit provocative, but I have very often this impression. Yeah, but, but uh, I would argue that the left and the right have a different idea of, of this culture. So the, the, the right wing for right wing culture is, uh, is a... Uh, no, but it's, excuse me, it's not a link wing in the sense of political organizing. Mm -hmm. okay. It's a link wing intelligence. It's very diffuse. It's a yes. Okay, I understand. Uh, but it's a provocation. <laughs> no, it's okay. Let's let, let. Are there more? I have to go. Oh, you have to? Yes, I have to go very soon. That's this DJ party. Oh, okay. yes. <laughs> so if you, if, you want to, if you want to address, final address is allowed. So <laughs> uh, then we have all to go to. Uh, Just to uh, what I said at the very beginning, I'm, I'm, I'm repeating. Uh, uh, what I wanted to, to, to tell to, to the younger audience, be careful, you know, uh, when, when it comes to understanding this uh, uh, legacy, cultural legacy, and be careful, uh, especially in relation to uh, these common ideological patterns. They are mostly wrong and then they make you blind for, for uh, this artistic uh, articulation. Thank you.